V Rising. Bro, what the f Around 10 months ago, I watched a video of my good friend, the Lazy Peon, where he talked about V Rising and how it's an absolute blast to play, to which I blindly listened to his words, of course, and just bought the game for myself. I played the early access version for quite a few hours before saying to myself, I'd want to wait for the full release maybe to really sink my vampiric teeth into and enjoy. Now I'll go out and say it straight away. I don't know Lazy Peon in any way, shape or form. I'm only a subscriber to his channel, broski. I just always wanted to say that in a video. So yeah, don't judge me on that one. But that's not what we're here we're here for v rising the action rpg that has a very interesting setting to it which is that you're a vampire she's nos farache she's italian and that's not just in a fancy sense but actually a nosferatu you hate the sunlight you feast on the living and sleep in the most uncomfortable coffins you can possibly imagine while looking cool as hell doing it now finally after about two years of early accessism and i hope that's a real word the full final version of the game has been released and i thought now is of course the perfect time to jump back into this game and see what has changed since i last played it now what makes v rising such an interesting game is that it turns the normal day and night cycle on its head because you are indeed a creature of the night where normally in pretty much any other game out there you would just sleep during the night and do most of your bidding during the daytime v rising asks you to literally avoid the sunlight at all costs which we'll get into in a bit admittedly but let's first get into what the f this game actually is as well as my impressions on the early hours of it and of course if you should be playing it as always i do want to hear your opinions on v rising and if you've liked it in the comments down below so let's get into this video bro now first things first and unfortunately for some as the game has transitioned away from early access it means all previous save files are donezo they're kaput they're dead that's a silly message it means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. Meaning, we all have to start fresh as a newbie vampire making a name for themselves. And once you've created your character and either made your person look cool as all hell or just freaking creepy, you set off to learn the basics. Now, straight away, you notice, of course, that the camera angle is isometric, which is a huge turnoff for some people, I do have to say. Personally, for me, the last game with this point of view I played was maybe Baldur's Gate 3 or Diablo. So I am used to the isometric view, but it does take a while to get used used to if i'm being just perfectly honest with that isometricism and again i do hope that's a real word means of course that the character attacks where you point your mouse to it's nothing new but it's something that again it does require a bit of getting used to now anyway going through the quick tutorial bit you are taught gathering of resources crafting and of course all of the vampiric needs that need to be done in v rising so you feed on pretty much any creature out there that has blood in them and through feeding you get to unlock some specific buffs depending on what type of creature or human you are sucking dry I beg your pardon anyway this is where part of the survival elements come in as you have this helpful in the center of your screen below that ticks down over time meaning you have to keep topping it up by sucking if the health pool does go to zero, you will start losing health over time and yes, the undead can indeed die as well. Thankfully, it doesn't tick down that fast so you'll always have it nice and filled up from devouring your prey you can also have items with you like rats for example to always keep some blood on hand the same pool of blood is also used to recover health once you've been swinging around for a bit against all of the creatures the hunters the bandits and pretty much everyone that wants you dead or deader and you will be doing a lot of swinging around because the game centers around this long list of people to hunt down the list works very similarly to how it did in the need for speed game most wanted if i remember correctly back in the day with its blacklist meaning you have to upgrade your gear and skills to be able to move up the list and this is where the game really shines in my honest opinion there is a lot of freedom in choosing your weapon and the two active skills as well as an ultimate skill later on that you get to use and abuse on your journey to vampiric greatness now what is also a similar journey from rags to more expensive rags is the gamer strove train to the heights of youtube so if you've enjoyed the video so far my broski like the video as well as subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot in growing this community of awesome broskies that are you guys on the opposite side of this screen so yeah man just clink subscribe to the channel now anyway it seems from my early hours with the game that certain named characters are weaker against certain types of combat be it long range with a crossbow or longbow as well as close range with your dual axes your spear your sword or even a giant two-handed mace now you can also use all of the aforementioned weapons to gather resources like wood or stone where it doesn't work like the normal survival mumbo jumbo where you have an axe to farm wood or pickaxe to farm stone instead what the game does is boost the gathering rate depending on the weapon 
weapon you have selected. So for example, axes just farm more wood and mace just farms more stone and so on and so on. But you can use all of them to do everything pretty much. So far, the weapons do seem balanced enough to have you switch between them. Even if, at least for me, I've noticed that the longbow is maybe a bit on the overpowered side or the more powerful side. Just because you can just kite enemies around and just avoid getting hit. But if weapons don't cut it, you can also have two active skills like I mentioned earlier, as well as the ultimate skill later on. And they come in the form of magic, like for example, ice, there's chaos, there's necromancy, there's of course blood, as well as storm. Here, the same shabazz applies, where some bosses seem weaker towards one element than others, and the game does a really good job at informing you what might be the strengths and weaknesses of a boss, with it allowing you to preview what they look like. It also shows you the distance, the gear level, as well as what you can unlock by defeating them. And that's just freaking awesome. I can really see myself getting addicted to clearing the list one by one, and just moving up in the world, as there are quite a few names to go through and with the game constantly feeling like i'm progressing towards something greater and something new it creates this freaking nice loop of just upgrade gather craft and hunt on top of crafting weapons and armor you can just build a full-on castle for yourself because why not i mean i don't think you ever need a reason to not build a castle in any game pretty much and yes before you even think about it there are a bunch of options for building as well as well as multiple layers of a castle to just go crazy with and build the most badass looking evil lair you can even put a throne in there some freaking uh, all kinds of chandeliers and just make it look vampiric as all hell now while you're doing all of this you have to keep an eye out on the top right corner of your screen where you see the day and night cycle clock this of course is vital for you as a vampire because well you are a creature of the night if i haven't said that already a thousand times it means the sun is a big no-no the sunlight can and most definitely will burn you into a absolute risk if you sit in it for too long trust me when i tell you this brother you don't want to be fighting any bosses when the night is ending or even worse when the sun is already out most of the battles take place in arenas and while some of them are admittedly in caves or in the woods where there are trees to hide behind a whole lot of them are just out in the open so you have to really time your ventures out of your castle to be able to maximize your ability to well be a vampire this is especially important when some of the bosses aren't that close by anymore so you have to do a bit of traveling to get to them so it's always important that you start your travels as the sun is setting of course now you can also just hide in bushes and wait for the sun to go down and just hide in some shade but that's not really rock and roll now is it you don't nearly feel as badass as a vampire should feel if you just roam the streets at night instead of just freaking hiding in the shadows which vampires also do admittedly early on you also get the ability to morph into a freaking wolf as well so traversal can be a bit faster through that you can also just turn yourself into a rat or later on in the game you can turn yourself into a bear which is cool i don't really see the use of turning into a rat because it says that enemies aggro less when you're a rat but i feel like they just aggro the same honestly but i noticed that being a rat is just you're a rat brother like you're, you're a rat what's that What's that, brother? As you can probably tell from my endless rambling on here, there is a lot to do in this game, and it can be very time-consuming if you really sink your teeth into it. See what I did there? please don't leave but as with every game out there of course you are bound to come across some issues or things that might be more annoying than creative features depending of course on the subjective opinion on the player and i do hope you do let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me on this or even disagree on what i'm about to say early on when you start building your base of operations it can feel like a absolute slog to wait around for your grinder to make bricks to then build stone walls for your castle now this is not a problem in itself of course because you can just go out and do things while the grinder just works on its own but it's like freaking 12 bricks or something for one piece of wall and like six planks on top of it as well as having to use bricks to build the flooring the walls everything uses bricks when you're building your castle so it is very time consuming in the sense of just waiting around for you to generate more bricks now you can just circumvent this by just having multiple grinders or smelters working simultaneously but this might cause a slight break for some people in terms of the flow of playing the game if you know what I mean. Other games have you just get materials instantly, while others make you wait like 15-20 seconds per unit built. So yes, it's a design choice, of course, which I found annoying initially, but the more you play the game, thankfully, it's not as noticeable as it was at the start, but that's something to keep in mind. Another slight niggle I found. What did he say? Niggle. 
was the amount of running back and forth. Again, it's not an issue in itself because every game has traversal of course, especially survival games, but the rate of enemy respawns is noticeably higher than you might find in some other games. The surrounding areas are littered with enemies to fight, and this is very evident in the boss fights in the game, as they are usually in some sort of campsite or small fort, so to get to them you have to first clear a big chunk of enemies. Again, it's nice and all during your first run, but if you end up dying at any point, even during the boss fight, which happens a lot, let's face it, you spawn somewhere near with only your weapons and clothing, meaning all of your items and healables have dropped where you last died. And in between you and your stuff, of course, are all of the enemies that have respawned. I would be lying if I said this wasn't an annoyance at times in the game, but thankfully the actual moment to moment combat in the game and other gameplay in general make up for it because it's just so much fun to play. Also a sniped other niggle that I found and I didn't write that in the script is, is that you can't fast travel with any kind of items in your inventory. You have to only have your healables, your equipment, but you can't have any other materials like wood, stone, all of this stuff. You can't have it with you when you fast travel. So that's a bit of a, yeah, I don't know what kind of design choice that is, but I didn't find it to be that cool. And here is the big question we like to ask here on the Gamers Trove channel, of course, and that's, is the game fun? And to that, I would like to say a resounding, absolutely. I mean, broski, if it's not clear already, I'm having a blast in playing this game, and I'm very excited to keep playing it and clearing the list. The mix of engaging combat and the sense of progression coupled with how well the game runs in general makes me really want to put it in the running to be the best survival RPG out there, or at least that's in my opinion, broski. But the real question is, should you play this game? How the f*** should I know? I was only here to tell you my opinion on the opening hours of the game and if I liked it. So now it's turned for you to tell me your opinion, broski. Tell me if you like this game, tell me if you've played V Rising, if you've completed it or not, if you put it down, any and all kind of opinions and comments are welcome on this channel. Let's start a conversation down below because I do want to hear what you guys think. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for your broski yet again. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to the channel like I've mentioned a few times already. And we are on the way to 1k and we are smoothly on the way. So we're getting there slowly but surely, but it's a good slow ride. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a great day wherever you're from. Whichever time of day you watch this ad, I've been your broski. I don't know how to end this video. So here's a meme I think of again while editing the video. Hasta prontísimo. Like, what do we gain from this shit? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're hurt, though. Like, bro, what the fuck? Yo!